before we get into the interview, I want to give a quick shout out to Hail Mary Athletics. Um, they're having a big clearance sell for all their stuff, rash guards, spats, patches, uh, t-shirts, so go check them out, HailMaryAthletics.com, and they're also on Facebook, Hail Mary Athletics. All right, let's get to the interview. <laughs> experience was we came in and there's these two buff tan Brazilian guys with tight shorts on with like techno music like doof, 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 doof. and they're all sweaty and rolling on the ground with each other and I looked at my friend I was like what have you brought me into what yeah. is this you know oh like I'm not goodness. I'm not I don't play for that team yeah. you know but and then of course you know like I, I, I we, we we took the classes and then I got into it and stuff and then wow. and then uh, you know I, I, I got up to maybe like a blue belt level and then yeah. uh, after I graduated school I came back and I started working and, and my my idea was I was gonna try to make good enough money try to make some passive income and and I was gonna do it as quickly as possible so I can live that jujitsu or you know train full time, train yeah. as much as I want without having to worry about going to work and all that stuff. So I, I stopped training for a while. I was working okay. uh, the first year. I was working at, at here at my parents' store, and I was and I saved up money. I, and me and my brother we saved up enough money to open up our first business, which was G3 Internet Cafe, and it took off, and we were able to have multiple chains on island and also one off island in Korea. So it, we really grew and during that time I made a lot of money but I wasn't happy and I got almost lost in my work that I, I forgot about why, why I wanted to make that money in the first place. The, you know, I, I, I wanted to make that money to make that passive income, to have the time to live the Jiu Jitsu lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I mean? One thing I learned through my experience is that if there is something in your life that's important that you can't live with, you can't be, you can't live a happy life without doing. Yeah. And for me, it's jujitsu, but for other people, it may be table tennis or mm -hmm. or art or music or whatever it is. In or you can't put it on hold. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you're trying to say, it's like what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to get ready for a future life. Yeah. But the time that you're living while you're getting ready is also your life. Yeah. You're living, that moment is your life, you know what I mean? Like right now, I can't, you know, I, I have to work, I have a day job, and I can't train twice a day, every day. You, you know, there are things you want to do, and there are things that you have to do. Yeah. And you have to do both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't just train all day. What I mean? How are you gonna feed yourself? Yeah. You know? What's gonna provide a roof over your head? How are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. So do what you want. You what you have to do. What you have to do in order to do what you want to do. But you can't give up what you want to do either. Wow. Yeah. So you. So I made. I made a promise with myself. So it's it's kind of a little commitment. You you make. You schedule in something for yourself that you commit to. So my commitment is I'm going to train Monday through Friday, once a day, every day, no matter what. Okay. And I make time for it, and I schedule everything else around so I can have that time. Wow. You know what okay. I mean? Like our professor, uh, Stephen Roberto, uh, always says, everyone has their own path. Yeah. Everyone has their own journey in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And I think also in life. but. If you just specifically look at jiu-jitsu, everyone has their own path yeah. and their own journey. Um, what is a failure that you experienced while putting not only this business together that you have right now, it's an awesome business, but just 
the other businesses that you, I guess whichever failure that you felt you got the most value and uh, lesson from, what's, what's that failure that you went through and how did you um, overcome it and learn from it? Uh, the, my most recent failure is uh, G3 Internet Cafe because it was financially my, my biggest success. Okay. So, uh, with the advance of technology, like my business was to have an internet cafe which is uh, rows of computers in a room yeah. uh, with high speed internet, high quality computers so that people who couldn't afford either computers or internet at home can come in and pay on an hourly rate yeah. to use the computer and to be on the internet. Okay. But with the advancement of technology, uh, such as like bundle packages for internet at home, and also... Uh, like cell phone and so, yeah, smart, Especially the smartphone. But yeah. if I had purchased an iPhone when it first came out and I played around with it, I would have, I think, seen, have like foresight into what was gonna happen in the future yeah. and would have prepared Yourself. and had a better exit strategy. Yeah. So one thing I learned uh, from that was to try to keep up with technology. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the same time, like that, my, 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 um, like my like financial life or like like my businesses were, were on a decline. Okay. My jujitsu life was on a on a up. So th like this is going down, my jujitsu is going up. Yeah. But if it was the opposite way around, like when I was doing really great like with my business and financially, but my you know like my spiritual life, like my jujitsu was on a decline. I wasn't training. Yeah. I was I wasn't happy. It made me. I, I fell into depression. You know what I mean. You know, Professor Roberto, he, he gave me an opportunity to, to, to teach the, the teens class yeah. from 12 to 15 and I've been doing that for over two years now yeah. and, it's, and it's, it's, it's been one of the you know, biggest blessings in my life. I, yeah. I, it's something that I really look forward to and I, and I enjoy. Yeah. Who are your, like, your role models? In whether it's someone who's all the way in, you know, like Marcelo Garcia or whoever, who are your role models, even if it's just here right now? Or yeah. I, I know this is a cliche, but mm -hmm. for me, it's really like my real role models are my parents. You know, yeah. it, it they it really 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 is. You know, like a, like a, like a good balance between uh, like my mom teaching me how to have that altruistic. Yeah. attitude yeah. of giving without expecting anything. My father's uh, teaching me how to have that warrior spirit. Okay, so I, I, I read this Facebook quote on online from uh, Scott Nelson from onthemat.com okay. and, uh, and I was able to, to meet him uh, on one of my trips to Washington DC and, uh, and uh, the, the quote said uh, do no harm, take no and, I, and it's something that I believe in, you know. Yeah. Not that, not that if someone comes at you aggressively or, or is come, someone's coming at you to do something wrong that you have to deck them, you know. That you have the right to tell them, no, you yeah. know what I mean, this is wrong. I said it with my mom, you know, just, just having that, those altruistic things, you know. And also being able to, to take things without having to like jump over the counter and knock someone's teeth out you know what yeah. I mean like 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 uh, she always tells me you know like you know you know she's Christian and she always tells me quotes you know things verses from the Bible and she always likes to tell me how how, uh, how you should uh, turn the other cheek you know how you're how but you know like for me the way I interpret turn turn the other cheek is you're turning the other cheek but you're not you're not backing down yeah you know and I, I feel like I feel like it coincides very well with with what we do as uh, jujitsu practitioners of uh, how we defend ourselves. Yeah. You know, we don't have to hurt you know people who are who are aggressive with us in order to in order to defuse the situation. We have yeah. tools to defuse the situation without injuring you know like you know what I mean. Yeah. But with jujitsu. If someone came and was very aggressive and tackled us down, we are able to use positions like the guard and we are able to defend ourselves yeah. until maybe help comes or we are able to sweep, get in dominant position, we are able to hold dominant positions 
we're able, and if worse comes to worse, we're able to choke, put people to sleep, yeah. and when they wake up, no injuries, they're yeah. fine. <laughs> yes, the, the, the kanji, the jujitsu, yeah. it actually means gentle art. art. Yeah. But at the same time, it can't, it, it can't, it can't just be gentle, it has to be effective. Okay, so what's your proudest moment so far, like up to this point? My proudest moment actually happened this month. Okay. And uh, after two years of uh, of just grinding uh, the kids in the kids class, and you know, like I, I lost a lot of kids, a lot of new kids came in, but I, I finally been able to bring them up to a level where I'm able to show them a little bit something advanced. Yeah. i have able to. I I I I, I never let them yeah. open their guard. I, I never taught him any kind of uh, uh, fancy passes, yeah. you know what I mean? So that I could give them a strong, strong foundation. Uh, like sometimes when you're, when you're working on one, one position for a long time and you're doing that position and it's, it's not working for you, working on a complementary position or another position will actually make that position better. Yeah. And I don't know why. But it, I, I think uh, I, I, I remembered s something from uh, Musashi Miyamoto. Okay. And he's the greatest samurai with the greatest technique to ever live in Japan, right? He, he said that in order to be a good swordsman, you must practice other arts. So, so for him, he practiced calligraphy. And if you don't know what calligraphy is, it's 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 uh, like Japanese uh, writing, like kanji writing, yeah. with uh, with a brush, yeah. and you have to be very skilled to, you know, like the people who do calligraphy, they can tell very which serious. is good and which is yeah, and and the strokes and everything. And he said doing other arts helps him uh, perfect his uh, swordsmanship. So you know, I, I think there is something to that where you're drilling triangles, you're getting better at cut throughs. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I think for me it comes from this me. is your philosophy degree coming out right yeah yeah this is my philosophy degree. <laughs> this is this this is not me but this is Nietzsche okay. or more more accurately Heidegger's interpretation of Nietzsche's um, uh, metaphysics okay but like like he he sees the artist as uh, as like an antenna like mm -hmm. a, like a very sensitive receptor okay and the more sensitive you are as a receptor the better artists you're gonna be. Mm. And what are you trying to receive? You're trying to receive uh, waves from what, he, what Nietzsche, what Heidegger calls the phenomena. And you can interpret that as God. I do, I interpret it as God because I'm Christian and I. Yeah. And so what exactly is art then? Art is the reflection, okay? Not the actual, but the reflection of God. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the more sensitive you are as a tool, the better receptor you are, the better you can reflect him. Reflect him. Wow. And the and the better the art is, the better the reflection of him is, the better the art's gonna be. Wow. He didn't put that seed or that desire in you for nothing. Do that's what he wants you to do. And, and that's the only way you're going to live a happy life, is to follow what God is telling you to do by Him planting the seeds of desire in your soul. Yeah. And if you defy Him and don't do those things, then you will be miserable. Alright, thank you Jen. That is gold. Alright, God bless.